Although workers can begin returning to offices in San Francisco, the buildings will not be nearly as full as they were pre-pandemic. In fact, the city no longer has the most tech industry office space in the country. According to a real estate and investment firm, CBRE, it's been tracking this kind of information since 2013. San Francisco fell from number one for the first time, now ranks number six. Cronforce Taylor Basaki joins us live from the city's financial district with more. Taylor? Well, this is the area of the city where many of those large corporations and tech companies are located. As we mentioned, though, many of these office spaces remain closed, even though San Francisco is in that orange tier that allows them to be open up to 25% capacity. So as you can imagine, these closures are taking a huge toll on the businesses that rely on that workweek foot traffic. It's been extremely slow. We only have one of our eight restaurants in the financial district open. And even that one restaurant is doing about 20% of our normal sales. Steve Sarber owns Ladle & Leaf, formerly known as the San Francisco Soup Company. Pre-COVID, they had 13 Bay Area locations. Now just three are open, and many of those waiting to reopen are in San Francisco's financial district. But due to closed offices and people working from home, Sarber says he lost his main customer base. It's a trend that may continue as some tech companies are now leasing less space in the city. That is pretty scary news because we've always been able to count on the, the tech workers, especially over the last 10 years, you know, coming into what we used to call the financial district. Now we might call it downtown San Francisco. According to an annual study done by a real estate and investment firm, CBRE, the San Francisco Bay Area is no longer the top region in the U.S. with the most office space leased by tech companies. This is a first since 2013 when the company began this study. The San Francisco Bay Area has now fallen to number six in 2020 with Seattle rising to number one. What it shows is that San Francisco is not the magnet that it used to be. And I'm concerned that there could be a permanent shift in the way that workers think about coming to downtown San Francisco to work and the way businesses think about the need or the desire to open and operate in downtown San Francisco or even the Bay Area. This news is a serious concern for other restaurant owners like Tony Marcel, who's a partner at Wayfair Tavern. He says the success for many of these businesses in the downtown corridor is dependent on people coming back to work. It, it truly isn't enough. In our business model, you know, we, we, we rely on, on corporate businesses and, and meetings and um, people gathering and having social events or, or corporate events. So uh, we really do need those hotels and, and those office buildings to fill up for us to really um, continue to move forward. Well, here in San Francisco and the Bay Area, we've seen this study play out over the last year. For example, companies like Tesla are heading to Texas, and we've also seen Dropbox sell its Mission Bay building. Meanwhile, companies like Twitter are allowing employees to permanently work from home. So Taylor, I know the study takes the least office space into consideration. Does that suggest a lot of companies in San Francisco will close their city offices permanently? Well, Catherine, one of the analysts from the study says that these firms aren't necessarily leaving these cities that have fallen in rank, but instead, it sounds like a lot of these businesses or firms are putting more emphasis on expanding to other satellite locations to attract new uh, new employees. And, of course, in this case, they'll find some cheaper labor and expanding into other cities. Back to you.